बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस नेक्स्ट वीडियो एंड दिस इज दिक्सथ वीडियो ऑफ चैप्टर टू ऑफ एम्यूनोलॉजी इन द लास्ट वीडियो आई टूड यू दैट न्यूट्रोफिल्स दे बिलोंग टू द ग्रेन्यूरोसाइड्स बिकॉज देर आर ग्रैन्यूल्स इन द न्यूट्रोफिल्स एंड इन द न्यूट्रोफिल्स देर आर फोर टाइप्स ऑफ द ग्रैन्यूल्स एंड दे आर नोन इज द प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी टर्शरी एंड सिक्रेटरी ग्रैन्यूल्स and in the last video we were focusing on the uh, primary granules i've told you that these primary granules they are also known as the xerophilic uh, granules because uh, when you stain them with a specific dye like the right stain they are going to appear blue or violet under a microscope so is they love this blue color they are known as the xerophilic granules and then i told you about the important components of the primary granules and that includes the uh, myeloperoxidase the defensins and the lysozymes the elastase and the catepsins and in the last video i gave you a detail uh, of the uh, functions of the myeloperoxidase that they are responsible for the production of reactive oxygen species like the uh, hypochlorous acid and what this hypochlorous acid do that it is a strong oxidizing agent it oxidizes the protein by interacting with the cysteines and the methionines and the end result is the protein aggregation this uh, hypochlorous uh, peroxidase it also interacts with the nucleobases thereby leading to the formation of the modified bases and the hydrolysis of the glycosidic bond and the uh, effect is that there is damage to the dna and the rna so the combined action of the protein aggregation and the dna or the rna damage that leads to the cell death of the pathogen now in this particular video i want to focus on another important component present in the uh, primary granules and that is known as the defensins now these defensins they are a family of small cationic antimicrobial peptides and when i say that they are cationic that means that they carry positive charges that is because of the presence of the arginine and lysine amino acids in the defensins proteins now these defensins they come in two flavors one is known as the alpha defensins and the other one are known as the beta defensins and in the primary granules of the neutrophils you are going to find both of them now how these defensins they work these defensins they are responsible for uh, the disruption of the microbial membranes and these defensins they also interfere with essential microbial processes that we are going to see in this particular video so first we are going to focus on the uh, uh, microbial membranes how these defensins they disrupt the microbial membranes when you talk about the uh, membranes of the bacteria for example the gram negative one or the gram positive one the gram negative have uh, an outer layer which is known as the lipopolysaccharide and this lipopolysaccharide is actually having the phosphate groups and because of the presence of these phosphate groups the uh, lps is going to give a, a negative charge to the membranes of the gram negative bacteria so you can see that the uh, membranes or the cell wall of the gram negative bacteria that is anionic because of the presence of the lps because in the lps you are going to find these negatively charged phosphate groups when you talk about the uh, cell walls of the gram positive bacteria you are going to see these thecoic acids and again these thecoic acids are going to give uh, a negative charge to these particular membranes so is the defenses they are positively charged the membranes of the gram negative and the gram positive bacteria uh, they are uh, negatively charged so the positive and the negative they are going to interact with each other it would be very much similar to the uh, interaction of the dna uh, which carry a negative charge because of the presence of the phosphate groups and the histone proteins uh, which carry a positive charge again because of the presence of the arginine and the lysine amino acid in its structure so the dna and the histone proteins they interact with each other because of opposite charges same is true for the defensins and the membranes of the uh, gram negative and the gram positive bacteria so these defensins they carry positive charge these membranes carry negative charge they are going to interact with each other 
Now, this is just to give you, uh, you can see a, a difference between the gram positive and the gram negative one. I'm not going into the detail of that, just uh, to show you that the gram negative bacteria, they've got this uh, LPS and it give uh, a negative charge to the membranes. These gram positive bacteria, they carry these tachoic acids, these one, and because of this, you are going to have a negative charge on these uh, membranes. Now, when the defensins, they interact with this membrane, what happens next? When there is an interaction between the defensins and the membranes, so these defensins, they are going to disrupt the lipid bilayer by forming the pores in the uh, cell wall of the bacteria. Now, how this is achieved, they, these defensins, they insert themselves into the peptidoglycan structure. And when once they are inserted into the peptidoglycan structure, they leads to the structural changes or weakening of the cell wall. Once the cell wall that is damaged or that is weak, that leads to increased permeability and the leakage of ions and other molecules from the cell ultimately leading to the cell death. So the defenses, they are responsible for the formation of these pores. These pores are increasing the permeability and the leakage of ions and other molecules, ultimately leading to the uh, cell death of those particular pathogens. This is one important functions of the, uh, one of the important functions of the defenses. The other important function of the defenses is that these defenses they also interfere with the uh, protein synthesis and the DNA replication. But when we talk about the volume of the scientific data that is supporting the function of the defenses uh, as of the formation of pores in the cell membrane or the uh, you can say the cell wall, that much data is not available uh, as far as the functions of the defenses uh, is concerned uh, regarding the uh, interference with the protein synthesis or the DNA replication. So you can say that this is a, a debatable thing, but there are evidences which suggest that these defenses, they do interfere with the protein synthesis and the DNA replication. Another important function of the uh, defenses is that they are going to uh, inhibit the uh, adhesion of these pathogens to the host cells. Now, this is a very important function because when the pathogens, they want to infect a particular cell, the first thing they have to do is that they have to interact with those particular cells. And this adhesion is a very important uh, component of the, you can say, infection. What these adhesins do is, when you talk about these pathogens, they often express adhesins on their surfaces and these adhesins are used by these pathogens to interact with the host cells. Now these adhesins, as I've told you, that they are proteins or they are other molecules that facilitate adhesion to the host cells. So what these defenses do is that they can bind to the adhesins of these pathogens, thereby preventing their interaction with the host cell receptors. So instead of the uh, pathogen using its adhesins to interact with the host cell receptors, these uh, defensins proteins, they interact with these adhesins. So now you are having an interaction between the defensins and the adhesins. And when there is an interaction between the adhesins and the defensins, these adhesins cannot be uh, able to interact with these cell surface receptors. And once they are not able to interact with the host cell receptor, you have prevented the establishment of the infection because for the establishment of the infection, these uh, pathogens, they have to interact with these host cells. In these defenses, they are actually preventing those particular interactions, thereby preventing the establishment of the infection. Uh, another important function of the uh, defenses protein is that they have got this chemotactic activity. Now these uh, defenses, they actually bind to the chemokine receptors, uh, particularly those expressed on the surface of the uh, immune cells like the uh, neutrophils itself, the monocytes and the T cells. What this binding do is that it actu activates an intracellular signaling pathway within these immune cells, leading to changes in the cytoskeletal organization and migration toward the source of defenses. So these defenses, they also have this uh, chemotactic activity by attracting the other immune cells to the site of the infections so that the pathogen can be cleared from the site of the infections and the infection can be controlled. 
So these are the important functions of the uh, defenses. So if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, do ask me questions in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them and share it with your friends. I'll see you in the uh, next video where we'll be uh, having a detailed discussion on the uh, another important component of the uh, primary grind wheels.